observability and monitoring. What are they? Is there a difference? And which one should you use? Let's answer that. First up, let's take a look at monitoring. Monitoring is the practice of continuously tracking system health by comparing key metrics against predefined thresholds. You most commonly see these on dashboards with visual graphs displaying the data in a human readable way. Some examples of metrics you would monitor are infrastructure metrics like CPU and memory usage, or application performance metrics like server response times. Then when these metrics cross certain thresholds or match a pattern that's indicative of a problem, an alert will get triggered. So a basic one would be if CPU usage of my server crosses 80%, go ahead and warn me. Simple, right? But here's the catch with monitoring. Monitoring can only alert you to problems you've anticipated in advance. As we just saw, I'm the one that defines that 80% threshold. So you can't really monitor the unexpected very well. Also, it hasn't helped us to answer why our CPU just went above 80%. So we're gonna have to go and investigate that ourselves. And if we do this with just monitoring, we're kind of going in blind. Enter observability though. Observability has come about because modern systems are incredibly complex. We have microservices, cloud infrastructure, containers. This just means there's countless ways things can go wrong now. Observability gives us three key tools to look into issues. Structured logs for detailed event records, metrics for system performance data, and distributed tracing to follow requests end to end. But the real magic of observability is how this works together to help you understand any state that your system might get into, even ones that you never anticipate. Observability has context. You know why something happened, you know how it happened, where it happened, when it happened, and a whole lot more. Observability is a complex task though, since any data point could potentially be that missing clue for you to debug your issue, you might think you need to store everything, but a system that records absolutely everything about its operation would be impractical and expensive to scale. Coinbase once spent $65 million on this. In reality, you've got to constantly strike a balance on what data to collect and how much detail to capture. So using both monitoring and observability then, let's say our application starts running slowly. Monitoring would tell you memory usage is high. That's useful, but not enough. With proper observability though, we can now go in and see which services are affected. We can track specific requests that are causing problems, or we could identify the exact functions consuming the memory. We now understand the sequence of events that led to the issue that we were alerted to from that monitor in the first place. So that's the key difference. Monitoring is your early warning system, but observability is your detective. Monitoring tells you if something is wrong, like your CPU usage, while observability helps you figure out why, helping to find that problematic function or service. Monitoring is the what and the when, observability is the how and the why. If you want, think of this like your car's dashboard versus a car diagnostic tool. Your dashboard is gonna show you basic metrics, speed, fuel, temperature, and a check engine light. That's monitoring. But when something goes wrong, so the check engine light turns on, you're gonna need a diagnostic tool to tell you exactly what's happening under the hood, so the specific problem with the engine. That's observability. So the final question then is, which should you choose? Well, that's kind of the wrong question to be asking. It's not about choosing. Catching issues after they impact users is costly in both time, money, and reputation. Monitoring is your first line of defense against this. It lets you catch known issues before they become problems. But in modern cloud architecture with dozens of microservices, monitoring alone isn't enough. When an error occurs, you need observability to trace its path through your complex system and find that root cause quickly. The challenge though is balance. You need to collect enough data to debug effectively while managing your costs. So start out with solid monitoring and then build observability based on your real debugging needs. If you're looking for an easy place to get started with observability and monitoring, check out Betterstack. Otherwise, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more practical development tips and I'll see you in the next one.